Friday the 13th Part 5 ended with what intimated to be the passing of the killing reins to Tommy Jarvis, the boy who grew into a mentally traumatized man after Jason had killed his mother and those around him in Part 4, the final chapter. However, Part 6 derails the plotline of Tommy, potentially becoming the next Jason in spirit. He is still psychologically distraught and haunted by his experience with Jason, but otherwise seems well, and now, after being released from a mental institution, just wants to make sure that Jason is in his grave and dead. The character is also now played by Tom Matthews instead of Part 5's John Shepard, which at first takes some getting used to, but Matthews comfortably slides into the role. Unfortunately for the character of Tommy, however, lightning literally strikes and revives the rotting corpse of Jason in Camp Crystal Lake, now branded Forest Green, and those who enter its grounds are once again put on notice by Jason Voorhees. Hey everyone, this is Jan Mann, and this is a look back at Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives, directed by Tom McLaughlin. Not only does lightning resurrect Jason, but also gives him a more supernatural, superhuman, zombie-like presence. Before, Jason could be damaged, put an axe in his head, slice his shoulder with a machete, slice off his fingers, he would clearly feel it and be affected by it. Now, nothing is a threat, not weapons or bullets. Now he is an invincible, machine-like force, and somehow, someway, is inexplicably equipped with some new looking duds tailor made to holster and carry various weapons to dispose of any and all who cross his path. His resurrection in the movie isn't far removed from that of Frankenstein's monster, given the role that lightning plays in it and the strength that results from it. In fact, the movie takes other cues from that classic universal movie, particularly when it comes to various frame shots and the more gothic atmosphere certain scenes evoke. There is even a direct reference to the 1931 version of Frankenstein with a store called Karloff's. The name, of course, being a reference to the man who played the monster, Boris Karloff. The look, atmosphere, and framing also highlights where this movie further departs from the previous movies. Not only is there a different actor for Tommy Jarvis and the previous plotline of him becoming the next killer dropped, but there is an obvious much slicker production. Parts 1 through 5 are raw, grainy, and grungy, whereas Part 6 has more of a gloss or sheen that those movies don't. Whether or not this hurts the film's overall effect is subjective, but does disrupt filming continuity. And while Part 5 had very colorful characters and an off-kilter sense of humor, Part 6's humor goes in a different direction, to the point that it's a direct contrast to the seriousness of Jason's threat and the brutality of his kills. It's not that there aren't brutal serious kills in the movie, such as the quote chiropractic kill where Jason bends the local sheriff's body backwards and snaps it in half, but then there are instances where Jason throws a man into a tree that has a smiley face carved into it and the victim's face colors it red, or how he rips the man's arm off in the process and stares at it quizzically after the fact. On one hand, this humor often works, even the more meta humor referencing cliches and horror movies. But on the other, it, along with the slicker photography, does differ or take away from the seriousness and grungier tone of the earlier movies. In the end, however, Friday the 13th Part 6 was one of the most favorably reviewed films of the series by critics and fans alike. It's well made, and despite a shift in tone and look, honors what the series brought before and the myth of Jason himself. There are even actual kids at the camp this go around with some pretty cool sequences of Jason looking frighteningly curious at a young girl camper, again reminiscent of Frankenstein, when the monster has an interaction with a little girl in that movie. There was also a plan to introduce Jason's actual father, with the humorous caretaker portrayed in the film being paid to take care of Jason's grave by the man. But alas, this portion was not followed through with. And like with all the Friday the 13th movies released in the 80s, the MPAA made cuts to some of the kills and gorier sequences, but these cuts do not ultimately take away from the overall fun and return of Jason, now in this heightened supernatural zombie form, to stalk Forest Green, ahem, <clears throat> Camp Crystal Lake once again.